Hi everyone, JJ here from Newegg Studios, and I'm really excited to give you guys a full guide on how to build a Z390 gaming system. So you can see here, I've got a huge amount of hardware on the table. I've got a little bit of everything to really allow us to build a truly impressive overclock system. We're gonna actually go through the different components, the key parts that you're really gonna need to be aware of when you go about building a high-end gaming system, and we're gonna just quickly highlight some of the key products that we're gonna be utilizing in this build. First and foremost, of course, we're gonna be leveraging the latest 9th gen series processor from Intel, the 9900K. This is an absolute monster of a processor, eight cores, 16 threads, and unlocked. On top of that, it offers an outstanding DDR memory controller that really allows us to crank up the frequencies. Of course, at the heart of this system is going to be a Z390 based motherboard, so we're gonna be tapping the ASUS ROG Maximus 11 Hero. This is gonna be the Call of Duty 4 Black Ops version special edition board. Really, really is gonna look awesome in this build. And of course, on the GPU side of the fence, we're looking to really push the envelope in terms of frame rate and really complement the high-end components that we're gonna be using here. So we've gone with the latest generation NVIDIA RTX 280 Ti. So let's go ahead and get this build started. Okay, so we've gone ahead and cleared everything off the table and we're gonna go ahead and get this build started. So the first thing is essentially gonna to be to install all the easy items that you can essentially install outside of the chassis. And that's going to be getting the motherboard primed with the processor, M.2 drives, as well as the DRAM. The reason why we're doing this is it's much easier to install essentially all these items outside of the chassis, uh, just free form to be able to really easily and effectively make sure you're getting these guys installed. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and unbox the CPU, the M.2 drives, and the DRAM, unpack the motherboard, and get this installed started. So we've got everything unboxed and we're gonna go ahead and get our processor installed. So this is probably one of the most complicated parts, but it's actually pretty simple. So let's go ahead and walk you through it. First things first, uh, we've got the motherboard essentially set on top of a box that came inside the motherboard. This is pretty much the easiest way to go ahead and handle this process. Uh, next up, we're gonna go ahead and pop off the actual um, uh, protection plate that's actually on top of the CPU socket itself. Um, now there's a couple of different recommendations that you'll find in the manual that would tell you to essentially install the processor then pull down and this will pop off. I don't do it that way but really the choice is up to you both ways work. So uh, let me go ahead and uh, remove this. So first things first I'm gonna use my thumb. I'm gonna bring that over to the actual retention lever. I'm gonna pull out and once you pull out you'll see the retention lever lift up. I'm gonna go ahead and lift up. Bring the actual retention plate up as well. Use my other thumb, pop that out, set that aside. Make sure to keep a hold of it because if you ever need it, you don't want to have thrown it away. I'm then going to go ahead and take my processor, make sure to hold it uh, by putting your essentially your fingers on the top and the bottom. I find that a little bit easier and make sure the notch on the actual CPU is essentially up, not facing bound. Okay, I'm going to bring that over to the CPU socket, drop it up, excuse me, drop it in. It'll line up with the actual uh, retention pin right there. Bring down my plate, and then from there, you'll see the levers up there. Bring down, push in, and you're good to go. So now that we've got our CPU installed, we're gonna go ahead and install the memory. This is a pretty straightforward process. So I've gone ahead and unboxed all our memory. We're gonna be using some really awesome T-Force uh, Nighthawk RGB memory, which is gonna go perfectly, of course, with this RGB-enabled system. So when you are installing the DRAM, there's a couple of things you wanna keep in mind. One, never make contact with the actual interface or the pins themselves uh, that can actually cause issues with the memory initializing. So always hold it from the top of the DRAM module itself. The other important part is gonna be actually lining up the notch with the actual notch pattern that's in the DRAM bank itself. So you can see right here that I've gone ahead and lined this up and so it'll drop in place. But before we do that, we also wanna keep in mind that there is an actual, uh, let's say, optimized placement pattern. And this is actually silk screened on the motherboard or you can reference it in the motherboard manual. Specifically for our Maximus 11 Hero, that's gonna be in the A2 bank and the B2 bank. But because I'm gonna be installing four DIMMs, I don't need to worry about that. So you can go ahead and load it up either from the left-hand side or the right-hand side, no need to worry. So let's go ahead and drop these DIMMs in. I'm gonna go ahead and line that up. I'm gonna use my two thumbs and push down until I hear a click and I'll, I'm good to go. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and finish installing these memory modules. And one word of note, some of you might be wondering about this retention clip right here at the top. This board has been designed to essentially have our QDIM design, so you don't need to worry about this retention clip on the bottom, it doesn't exist, but it will fully lock into place. So now that we've got our CPU and our memory installed, next up is gonna be installing the onboard SSD. Now this is only gonna apply if you're gonna be using an M.2 based SSD, as once again, I find it much easier to install the M.2 drives uh, freeform outside of the chassis, as opposed to having the board physically vertical inside of the chassis and trying to uh, remove everything and mount the M.2 drive in place. So a couple of things you do wanna keep in mind is that you will need the M.2 screws and standoffs. These are really, really small, so you won't be able to see them. We'll pick them up in a secondary shot to be able to show you guys. But 
these are actually included in the accessories that come inside the motherboard box. So you wanna make sure to get your M.2 standoff and your M.2 screw. If you're gonna be installing two M.2 drives, of course you will need both uh, screws and both standoffs. I generally actually recommend that even if you're not going to use two drives, I still would actually install the secondary standoff and screw in that other M.2 slot so that ever in the future, if you upgrade, it's already there in place and you're good to go. So with that, I am gonna go ahead and just uh, unscrew the screws that essentially lock in the M.2 heatsink uh, for the board. And you're fine to actually do it in either position, either the top mounted M.2 slot or the bottom mounted M.2 slot. I'm using the bottom just because you have essentially more uh, thermal isolation. And what I mean by that is essentially when the graphics card is installed, this board is optimized so that there's no M.2 slot uh, directly underneath the primary physical by 16 slot. Both of them are essentially are to a degree thermally isolated, but this one is furthest away and also is gonna get some nice intake airflow from the system once it's up and running. We also do have, of course, an M.2 heatsink in play. So you can see right here, there's an actual interface material that is on this M.2 heatsink. And so we're gonna need to peel this off and then I'm gonna go ahead and install my actual M.2 drive itself. You will need to make sure that the actual key pattern lines up with the actual M.2 slot itself. So I'm just gonna show you guys for reference right here. I'm gonna angle it in place and then bring it down and you would be good to go. But first we're gonna need to actually install this actual standoff on the corresponding mount point. So this is gonna be a 2280 M.2 drive and then remove the actual thermal, uh, uh, thermal interface um, material which is protecting the pad uh, to allow it to make direct contact with our M.2 drive and we'll be good to go. So let me go ahead and first get this standoff in place. Now that I've got the M.2 standoff in place, we're good to go. You only need to do finger tight. No need, no need to use any specialized tools to get a uh, heavy torque on there. From there, I'm just gonna go ahead and use uh, my nail and pull off this protective material. And we're good to go. Now this pad is gonna have a bit of stickiness to it, so you wanna make sure to essentially not have anything uh, lying around or essentially make sure to have clean hands because you don't want essentially anything sticking to the actual thermal pad itself. And I'll take my M.2 drive. Once again, I'm gonna angle it, line it up, bring it down, and it will lightly kind of lock into place a little bit because there is a bit of a retention lip that's there in place. I'm gonna get my M.2 screw and screw this in. Again, you really only need to do finger tight. And now we've successfully installed our Samsung NVMe uh, SSD. So I'm now gonna go ahead and put the actual heatsink back in place. Go ahead and line it up. And once I line it up, just gonna go ahead and put those screws to firmly lock it in place. And with that, we've successfully installed our M.2 drive. So moving over to really the next big step for our build, it's actually gonna be installing the CPU cooling solution. So again, this is actually something that with the right selection of the right components, you can actually do that much easier outside of your chassis. Uh, while there's definitely a large amount of chassis that make this process fairly easy when you physically install it inside the chassis, our setup is actually gonna allow us for the most amount of flexibility and ease of use. So we've got a Fantex Entho Pro uh, SE. The great thing about this chassis, as you can see right here, it's actually got a removable radiator mounting plate. This has allowed us to take our ROG Ryu 240 uh, AIO cooling solution and essentially remove this actually mounting plate and mount this outside of the system and then we can go ahead and bring it back in. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. Okay, so we've gone ahead and actually pulled out the radiator mounting plate, which you can see right here. And we actually have our Ryu 240 millimeter AIO closed loop cooling solution. A Couple of things you do wanna keep in mind. First and foremost, that when you're unpacking everything, you do wanna make sure to not remove this actual uh, protective uh, piece of plastic. This essentially is making sure that the thermal compound, which is already pre-applied to the base of the actual water plate itself, is essentially not gonna be smeared away. So you wanna make sure to keep that in place until you're actually ready to mount um, this portion directly to the actual CPU itself. Now, another point of consideration is actually gonna be where you physically mount this. This chassis gives us a lot of flexibility in terms of where you can mount it. We could actually mount it here in the front, or we could actually mount it here at 
top. And really there's no bad installation option. It's really your preference uh, based on aesthetics and potentially off of airflow. Here we've actually got a large amount of mesh for intake airflow at the top as well as actually at the bottom. Now in the top configuration, sometimes users decide to also set this up as an exhaust. Again, the choice is actually up to you. I actually generally tend to favor liking to use my setup to actually bring in air from the top and actually have it blow down across the actual VRM assembly for the motherboard. You choose to have it as an exhaust and just treat this as your single intake, that's entirely fine. Really, in both situations, you're still gonna have great airflow and overall good thermal performance. One thing you do generally wanna keep in mind though is gonna be the placement of this rad. So if I go ahead and do a little bit of a test fit, we'll see that the radiator is gonna fit in here in this place. If I hold it essentially there, I can kind of test see how that is gonna look, okay? And that's just something kind of you wanna feel out and see, do you like that overall aesthetic versus let's say, mounting the radiator in the front and then streaming it over to the CPU socket. I tend to not like that look as much, but really the choice is up to you. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, mount the actual fans to the radiator. And then once I go ahead and do that, I'm gonna mount the radiator to the mounting plate and we'll keep on moving on the line. So we've gone ahead and essentially set up our fans on top of the radiator and we're pretty much good to go. But I wanna go ahead and give you guys a little bit of insight into our specific build configuration. Now this is gonna be a definitely an RGB theme system, but we definitely wanna go, I think, with a clean stylized look um, because that's really the way that I prefer RGB lighting in the system. Now this Ryu 240 millimeter does feature RGB lighting actually in the central pump head as it has an actually OLED screen. Looks awesome, it's really cool, but I actually wanna add a little bit of top filled ambient lighting into our system. And this we're actually gonna to achieve by utilizing some Fantex Halos Lux RGB frames. And that's actually what we've got right here. These frames um, can essentially be seated on top of the actual fans themselves. And once they're in place, we'll be good to go. Now, of course, if you are just using the cooler by itself, you don't need to, of course, worry about this. It's not a requirement, but in our build, we are gonna be adding these in. And so we do wanna account for the additional fan cabling that we're gonna to have to account for, as well as also making sure that the directionality of the cables that we're gonna have are going in the same direction as the rest of our cables. So we've gone ahead and mounted the actual radiator to the mounting plate. And from this point, you're pretty good. Um, we do wanna go ahead and recap that. Again, you do have the flexibility with this type of setup that if you want to have it look differently, uh, oriented differently, that is entirely up to you and you can definitely do that. With the way this kind of system is laid out, if you wanted, I'd say the maximum breathing room for kind of a visual aesthetic for the motherboard, you take a look at our board, of course, uh, you're going to have the VRM heatsick here at the top. When we physically install this into the system, the actual radiator is gonna be probably visually obstructing this top portion a bit here. So if you're looking to maybe have a cleaner look, then definitely you would wanna mount the radiator here in the front of the chassis. But then that would also mean that you would end up having to do a little bit more rework where you need to move these fans and you would actually have to have them here positioned at the top. Um, definitely there's nothing wrong with that. And if you want to have, like I said, that cleaner aesthetic, you can definitely go that route. It's entirely up to you. From here, it's gonna be a pretty straightforward process. We do need to go ahead and uh, first, get the mounting plate, uh, essentially the back plate for the actual uh, CPU cooler itself affixed to the back of the motherboard. And then we're also going to use the retention plate, which works in conjunction with uh, the cooler. It's already actually on the cooler for our CPU socket. We have no reason to change it. That's actually uh, these right here. You can see that we've got four points. That will essentially affix to four standoff screws where we've got the bag that's gonna come with those standoff screws that are in place. So pretty much gonna get the back plate installed, mount our standoff screws, then from there, get this shifted inside and then we'll uh, get this installed. Okay, so next we're gonna actually be installing this back plate right here. Uh, so we've got a lot of different flexibility in terms of how we can have this set up either outside or essentially with the motherboard inside the chassis. The Enthro Pro has a big cutout so that if you said you wanted to mount the motherboard and then put in the back plate, you could do that. I find it a little bit easier to do it outside so that's what we're gonna do. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and take my board, lift it up. You wanna make sure that the actual corresponding back spacers right here are lined up for your correct socket. They're actually uh, etched on the um, back plate itself. And you just wanna pretty much guide them in there until you have them pretty much pushed through. At that point, uh, you can go ahead and lay the board back down. Make sure that they don't come out of place. And you wanna grab your uh, standoffs 
Uh, these standoffs essentially are included, of course, with the cooler. And uh, just go ahead and begin to screw them into place to essentially lock in that back plate. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish that up and we'll be good to go. Okay, so at this point, we're pretty much ready to begin starting moving some of the things inside the chassis, but there's a couple of key things to keep in mind. First and foremost is that you would wanna make sure to install the actual IO shield. The great thing though is with our latest generation of ASUS 390 motherboards, many of them actually have the IO shield pre-integrated on the board. So no need to worry about actually getting that installed beforehand into the chassis and then installing the motherboard. So you can see right here, I've got the IO shield. Now there is one thing to keep in mind, because of the way that we've decided to go ahead and mount the actual CPU cooling solution, this can actually obstruct the actual CPU power connections. So uh, you can see right here, this is our top CPU power connections. So we will need to go ahead and actually have our power supply installed and then route those initial cables to go through and connect to the board before we actually go back and mount our CPU cooler. Now, if you mounted the CPU cooler, as we noted in the front of the chassis, you wouldn't really have to worry about this. But again, you would have to move those front fans to the top of the chassis. So to just give you a visual reference here, we've gone ahead and flipped our Entho Pro M uh, to the back and you can actually see right here, this is where the power supply will mount. We'll actually bring the cables out. We'll bring them over here to the top. We'll run them through and essentially this open cutout right here is gonna be uh, filled because essentially the motherboard will be here. Uh, but we'll go ahead and run those cables through the top here and then we'll run those into the actual corresponding connectors. Once we've gone ahead and finished that up, we then can proceed to go ahead and install our CPU cooler. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and get this motherboard mounted into the chassis. Now, normally I would recommend that you go ahead and lay the chassis down on the table uh, just to be able to make sure that you get a little bit more, uh, I think, rigidity in place when you're doing this. But just for framing purposes, we're gonna go and we're gonna do it vertically. And also this chassis does actually have a retention pin in the center for its primary standoff. So it will allow the actually board to kind of set in place once I go ahead and move it in. Now, beyond that, you're also gonna wanna make sure that you separate the nine screws that come included with the actual uh, the chassis. And so these nine different screws that you're gonna have, these are essentially going to be the screws uh, that you will use to mount the motherboard to the standoffs, which are already in the chassis. Uh, so just keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and get this mounted in. Okay, now that I've got the motherboard seated in place, I'm gonna go ahead and start to go ahead and get screws seated in. I generally start with the center screw, and then from there, uh, I'll start putting screws in each one of the corners of the boards and then round them out. All right, so now that we've got our motherboard installed, our next step is actually to install the power supply. And the reason why is, as we noted, we're gonna actually wanna go ahead and run uh, some of the actual power connections to the motherboard before we actually slide in uh, the AIO cooler, which is on that mounting plate. So we've got our power supply here. You can see that we've got an opening cavity right there. So we're gonna slide the power supply through there. We're then gonna go ahead and run the cables through the different uh, grommet points that we have here in the chassis uh, to the corresponding 24 pin motherboard power as well as the eight pin power. Now you can see this is a fully modular power supply. Uh, most of the power supplies I would recommend for this type of build, you know, like an 850 watt, 1000 watt class PSU are gonna be fully modular. So you're just gonna wanna make sure to set aside the power uh, supply cables you're gonna need. If you just want a quick recap, at a minimum, of course, you're gonna have to have your uh, 24 pin motherboard power. You're also going to need your 8-pin CPU power. Uh, now, the motherboard will actually support an additional auxiliary power connection. That's not required, but if you wanna go ahead and connect it, there's definitely not gonna be any harm. From there, you're also going to need uh, at least your uh, PCIe power, and that's gonna be for your graphics card. Now, we're using a 280 Ti, so that's going to be two 8-pin uh, PCI Express powers, so we're gonna need at least two of these cables. And then last but not least, we're also going to need some uh, SATA power connections. These are gonna be not only for some of our RGB-based controllers, but also actually for RGB-based SSD. Now, of course, if you have any other type of devices that you're gonna have in your system and you need those corresponding cables, you need to make sure to get those connected to the power supply at the same time because it's gonna be pretty much almost impossible to connect these uh, cables directly to the power supply once it's been slid into the chassis. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, slide in the power supply and go ahead and connect some cables. 
All right, so we've gone ahead and got the motherboard installed, power supply installed, and we've got our primary cables for 24-pin power as well as the 8-pin CPU power wired up and connected. So we're good to go. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and mount our uh, closed-loop AIO cooler. So let's go ahead and uh, get this mounting plate here uh, for the actual radiator slid in at the top of the chassis. Now, one note is we did go ahead and remove the actual front-mounted 5 and a quarter optical bay, and this allows us to go ahead and actually slide back, uh, essentially, the radiator to have a little bit more breathing room between, essentially, the top of the motherboard uh, and this actually mounting plate. So, let's go ahead and slide this guy in. Okay, so now that we've gone ahead and uh, mounted the actual uh, radiator mounting plate, of course, with our closed loop cooling solution, we now need to actually take uh, the pump and the actual cold plate itself and line it up with the actual back plate and the standoffs that we previously installed on the board. So, at this point, you can go ahead and remove this actually protective plastic. Still want to minimize making any contact course with the underside and removing any type of that thermal interface compound. Now you entirely do not need to replace this thermal interface compound. It has gone ahead and already been validated to be able to ensure that you get a high level of performance and uh, you're good to go in that respect. So we're just going to go ahead and angle this over, line it up pretty much with the screws that are present there. Once you get those lined up, you'll see that the actual screws are pushing through there. And at that point, you're just going to need to take the corresponding standoff, screw that into place, and you'll be good to go. Okay, next up, we're gonna go ahead and get the graphics card installed. You can see that I've gone ahead and already removed the actual PCIe slot covers themselves, and we're pretty much set from there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this graphics card installed. I'll then put in the corresponding thumb screws to get it locked into place. We'll go ahead and connect the PCIe power cables. And then from there, I'm gonna go ahead and start routing some of the actual cables, getting things overall connected. We'll, we'll also go ahead and mount our RGB SSD right here, and uh, pretty much start getting ready to initially power on the system. Okay, so at this stage, we've pretty much almost finished off our build. We can see that we've gone ahead and got the graphics card installed, got the SSD mounted, I've got the CPU cooler course installed, and pretty much all the other aspects. At this point, uh, all we have to do is just do a little bit of overall cable management. I'm gonna be adding maybe a little bit of additional LED strips uh, just to be able to add a little bit more ambient lighting, and probably also go ahead and install a back fan uh, for that exhaust, and also probably put another halo frame on there just to be able to go ahead and give us just a little bit more RGB flare. But, Beyond that, you're pretty much good to go. Now, at this point, um, once you go ahead and start to dial in all your cables, I don't recommend that you put on that side panel yet. You're going to essentially want to power on the system, so just do a soft power on self-test. Now, whether you've gone ahead and actually connected the uh, power leads for the chassis for the power buttons or using the motherboard's uh, integrated power button, either option is fine, but you're going to want to essentially do a soft test, make sure that the system is powering on correctly, you see all the components initialized. If that happens normally, you're going to want to go ahead and connect your actual display. Once you connect the display, I would strongly recommend that you actually use our Easy Flash 3 option, which is in the BIOS, uh, to go ahead and update to the latest UEFI before you go about installing your operating system. So, right now we're just going to go ahead and do a quick power on self test, make sure that the system turns on, and we're going to do essentially a visual check to see that essentially everything lights up. You can see right there that pretty much uh, everything gets kicked on. Uh, we should see pretty much the majority of all of our components come on in terms of some form of LED lighting helping to confirm that we know that those components are connected. We should see all our fans spinning up. Uh, we should see for our Ryu 240mm AIO that the actual is an illumination. And of course there's the image that's at that center of the pump head. And uh, from there, we're pretty much good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and spend a little bit of time to finish up tidying up some of these wires, get that fan mounted in there, a little bit more RGB lighting, and we'll bring it to you uh, in one complete shot to let you see what this completed system looks like.
Okay guys, so you can see we've pretty much gotten to the end of our build. We've gone ahead and put on the side panels, we've powered on the system, we've got our operating system installed, we're at the desktop, and pretty much we're ready now to take to the next level by defining uh, the color palette that we want for our system, and of course starting on overclocking to really be able to take our GPU, our CPU, our memory all to the next level because of course this is an overclock enabled platform. To recap essentially what we've got together in this awesome Z390 9th gen gaming system, let's go through the parts quickly for you guys. So we've got of course, uh, all together inside of this awesome Fantex Entho Pro uh, MSE based chassis. And this uh, has a real nice uh, level of flexibility as you can see in terms of how we were able to lay out all the components. And just the configuration that we've gone with is just one option that you have available to you. At the heart of the system and of course really powering the entirety of everything is a Z390 motherboard and we've gone with the ROG uh, series motherboards and specifically the Maximus 11 Hero, the Call of Duty 4 Black Ops Edition. Now this board's of course gonna give us all the ability that we're looking for in terms of RGB connectivity and control, awesome fan controls and great overclocking. And speaking of overclocking, of course, on the CPU side, we're utilizing Intel's latest ninth generation 9900K series processor. Keeping that processor cool is the ROG Ryu 240 millimeter closed loop uh, all-in-one cooler. Uh, in addition to that, we've also gone ahead and taken some of Fantex Halo Lux fan frames. These are addressable RGB fan frames, and we've placed them not only on the exhaust fan, but also actually on the fans for the Ryu 240 millimeter cooler, just giving us a little bit more pop. On the memory side of the fence, we've gone ahead and tapped T-Force with our Nighthawk RGB memory. We are also utilizing T-Force's 240 gig uh, base SSD, and that's just a secondary drive for some additional files. And on top of that, just gives us a nice pop and flare uh, in the front of our chassis. Now, the primary storage for the entirety of the system is going to be M.2 based. As you saw, we've got two Samsung uh, NVMe PCIe SSDs sitting in M.21 and M.2. So we're covered there in terms of performance. For the GPU side of the fence, this is the RTX 2080 Ti OC edition. This is our Strict Series graphics card. It's absolute monster in terms of the performance, uh, but we've got a fantastic thermal solution on there, helping to keep it uh, really cool, really stable, and also allow for some nice overclocking headroom. As we move to the other kind of components that we've got here, of course, we've got a great keyboard for our gaming sessions with the ROG Strix Flare, ROG uh, Gladius 2 Origin, and then, of course, we need a real high refresh rate monitor, so we've got the ROG Swift PG258Q 240 hertz monitor with one milliseconds response time. All the way around, it's a pretty awesome system that we put together here, and I think a really good foundation to give you guys, hopefully, a baseline if you're looking to be able to build an awesome Z390 based gaming system. Now, if you guys are interested in, of course, finding out about more Z390 series motherboards, make sure to check out all the overviews that are available here on the uh, Newegg YouTube channel. And you also want to make sure to subscribe because there's going to be a lot more content, including a full overclocking guide on how to overclock 9th gen series processors, as well as another build guide for a mini ITX system. So with that, take care, take it easy, enjoy the rest of your day.